to our kupuna, the environment was absolutely everything. Uh, Native Hawaiian culture is so deeply rooted in Aina, which is the land, the sea, the skies, and all of that nourishes. We have this phrase, Heli ka aina he kawa ke kanaka, which is land is chief and man is servant. I'm an islander by background, and so for us, our interconnection with the natural environment and its protection is essential to our well being. I grew up on a small island. Uh, my mom used to have the, a map of the world on our wall and I thought, there is no way the world is that big. And it was only after after leaving did I realize, oh my goodness, I felt like I was, in the, I was at the center of the world because you're surrounded by this big, beautiful ocean and you realize that the ocean is really what connects us all. When we're looking at particularly indigenous communities around the world, you know, there's that famous stat that indigenous communities are only about 5% of the global population, but they safeguard 80% of all global biodiversity. And so we're looking at the health protection and longevity of these ecosystems. Indigenous communities are a central facet of the health of these ecosystems. And one of the things that, you know, I try to do in, in my work as well is also to remind people that you know, when we're thinking about conservation and the health of these ecosystems, people are part of that. You know, as they thrive, we thrive through that relationship of reciprocity. So the acknowledgement of that enduring stewardship, both past, present, and with that concerted effort towards the future, is something that is fortunately growing within this conversation, both within a conservation of policy, but also in a scientific context as well. So scientists traditionally, as we know, go out and measure and have data and documents, you know, to identify what's going on and they try to identify the causes and the changes. For us as Indigenous people, I think we're more um, connected in, and have a very deep inherent understanding and we know how things used to be. We have stories and songs and artwork that has been passed down through many generations that tells us about you know, the reef space and what happened there and how it's how it was formed and how it is now managed. And I think traditionally um, the two knowledge systems are complementary and I think they can be complementary into the future and learning how to better work with traditional owners can give a much more fuller understanding of what's happening now and what needs to happen in the management of, of the reef space in particular. Indigenous science and knowledge is one of the most robust, localized, and highly detailed bodies of knowledge relates to the natural environment that we have. And so I always remind folks, whether it's in a policy or a scientific context, that if we're not valuing, respecting, and investing in that knowledge, we're not building solutions that are as robust or as impactful as they can be. I think the intersection of historical knowledge of a place, traditional practices, and modern technology is where we at Kuleana Coral Restoration thrive. We were founded by a group of native Hawaiians, including fishermen, surfers, scuba divers, scientists, boat operators, ocean conservationists, all with a vast knowledge of where we come from and a deep respect for our home. And these roots mixed with Western technology, education, research and tools have helped us be successful in piloting new approaches to coral restoration. We have a national shark working group, um, which is comprised of uh, fisher folks, like shark fisher folks, uh, government, so like the Belize Fisheries Department. But the, the, the reason for that group is so everyone can come together and make the best decision for shark monitoring and shark capture and all of that stuff. I think it being able to like collaborate with local fishers you kind of gain access to the knowledge that they have. Like there's a good example of, you know, we had tried for quite a while to find tiger sharks to get some tags out and get a better understanding of how they're using the greater, you know, Caribbean region. Um, but we were having difficulty finding them. And then when we paired up with one of the local fishers, they were able to sort of get us on those sharks. So they have a better, you know, a lifetime generational knowledge, really not even just lifetime knowledge of where these animals are, what they're doing, the seasons that they're coming through, you know, different, not only about the animals, but the environment. Working with local folks to do this, we're also working towards conservation. So yes, we're getting that core research done, but through this, we're also mitigating fishing pressure on sharks. 
Our ancestors, who were so isolated from the rest of the world, maintained sustainability long before the term was ever popularized, based on a foundational knowledge and understanding that it's Aina that provides everything we need. It is so important that we recognize Indigenous cultures uh, for the impact that that they that they have, and we are the stewards of the land. It is embedded in our in our religion. It's embedded in in our daily practices. It's really important for the rest of the world to acknowledge that. That way, we can also regain agency in in our own islands or or beyond.